In 1917, the Mexican Revolution was good business in El Paso, Texas. Customers paid 25 cents to scramble onto the roof of the El Paso Laundry Company to see the Battle of Warrens. But a fight was also brewing at home. U.S. health authorities who were concerned about a typhus epidemic in Mexico had begun delousing Mexicans who were crossing from Juarez into El Paso. And Bears John Burnett reports that on this date in 1917, the El Paso Juarez bath riot broke out. A native El Pasoan named David Dorado Romo has written an eye-opening popular history of El Paso Juarez titled Ringside Seat to a Revolution. As he says, it presents the history they never taught us in school. One chapter is about the bath riot. January 28, 1917, at 7.30 in the morning, Carmelita Torres, who is a 17-year-old Mexicana who is crossing the border every day, from Juarez to El Paso to clean American homes is stopped at the border by the U.S. Customs agent, and she is required to take a gasoline bath. Of kerosene and vinegar, it was noxious but effective at killing lice, which carry typhus. Before being allowed to cross, Mexicans had to bathe, strip nude for an inspection, undergo the lice treatment, and have their clothes treated in a steam dryer. So that morning, Carmelita Torres refused. She gets the other 30 women in that electric trolley to get off the bus. Suddenly other people start seeing what's going on. They go up and start protesting. And there's a huge riot. The El Paso Morning Times bannered the story the next morning with this headline. Auburn-haired Amazon at Santa Fe Street Bridge leads feminine outbreak. Juarez women incensed at the American quarantine regulations led a riot yesterday morning at the Santa Fe Bridge. Women ringleaders of the mob hurled stones at American civilians, both on the bridge and on the street. The Mexican housekeepers who revolted had good cause to be upset. Inside the brick disinfectant building under the bridge, health personnel had been secretly photographing the women in the nude and posting the snapshots in a local cantina. What's more, the women were doubtless aware of what at the time was called the El Paso Jail Holocaust that happened the year before. Tom Lee was El Paso mayor at the time. His son, Tom Lee Jr., described what happened in an interview on file at the Institute of Oral History at the University of Texas, El Paso. A group of prisoners was taking a delousing gasoline bath in the city jail. And some body, they never discovered as who, either threw a spark from a cigar or a cigarette or something, got the gasoline just a flare like that. Terrible. Uh, the, the gasoline was on some of these poor devils, and uh, they, uh, they burned to death. The bath riot continued into the afternoon. U.S. troops from Fort Bliss under General John J. Pershing had to be called out. More soldiers under the command of a Carancista general in Juarez showed up. They eventually quelled the riot, and the young Carmelita Torres was arrested. David Romo stands at a spot near the Rio Grande, overlooking the site of the old Santa Fe International Bridge. Unfortunately, not much happens after the bath rides in terms of, you know, Carmelita Torres has been called the Rosa Parks of the border, but Rosa Parks actually had an effect. The baths continue, the fumigations in a sense they get even worse. In 1917, there's 127,000 Mexicans that are deloused and fumigated at the border. And these fumigations go on for decades. The Mexican typhus scare ended by 1918, but the fumigations by the U.S. Public Health Service did not. They spread up and down the 2,000-mile border, yet in no other ports of entry, not Ellis Island, not San Francisco, not Detroit, were a class of foreign nationals required to strip naked, bathe, and be disinfected, only Mexicans on the southwest border. The mandatory disinfections became an unpopular rite of passage for Mexicans seeking entrance into the United States. This is a crudely recorded interview made 32 years ago with Jose Cruz Borciaga, who was a janitor in El Paso in the 1920s. He's the father of Chicano author Antonio Borciaga. At the customs bath by the bridge, they would spray some stuff on you. 
It was white and it would run down your body. How horrible. And then I remember something else about it. They would shave everyone's head, men, women, everybody. They would bathe you again with creolite. That was an extreme measure. The substance was very strong. The forced fumigations were so hated by Mexican laborers that they led to a new problem for the United States, illegal immigration. Alexandra Minna Stern is a medical historian at the University of Michigan who's written about public health along the southwestern border. Once those policies were implemented, many immigrants decided, I don't want to subject myself to this. I'm not going to pass through the designated port of entry at the Santa Fe Street Bridge or any other port of entry. I'm going to cross into the United States in a remote area of the river or of the desert. There were so many illegal crossings that the U.S. government created the short-lived Mounted Quarantine Guard in 1921. Their job was to patrol the international divide on horseback and round up undocumented Mexicans. The quarantine guard was dissolved when the U.S. Border Patrol came into existence in 1924. The fumigations continued in one form or another for four decades. As late as 1958, contract Mexican laborers, known as braceros, were sprayed with insecticides, including DDT, before they were admitted. The practice was finally discontinued as health authorities realized the chemicals were dangerous. Looking back on the disinfection campaign, one must ask, were they justified? Were they racist? Leon Metz, who writes a local history column for the El Paso Times, believes they were both. I understand the policy of bathing and delousing. You know, the problem is that whenever you try to defend or describe what's going on is, it makes you, even in your own mind, sound racist because you're sitting in my home right now. But if you had showed up at the door, filthy, and with fleas, and, and obviously many days from the bath, I might have taken water to you, but I would not have let you in the house. This is not dead history for author David Dorado Romo. When he listens to the acrimonious debate today over how to stop illegal immigration with more fences or troops on the border, he hears echoes of an earlier time. Back then, in a very literal sense, it was about ethnic cleansing, about trying to clean the dirty foreigners and exclude them from this country. And I don't think that much has changed today. I mean, the arguments are more sophisticated, but it isn't new. It's been going on for a century. Romo says Mexican-Americans have come up to him and thanked him for writing the book, they said their relatives had passed through the Santa Fe Bridge bathhouse, but had always been ashamed to talk about it. Finally, the story can be told. John Burnett, NPR News.